a young missionary whose life was cut short. She left a legacy that makes us reflect on love for others. Today's curiosities are about Helena Agnieszka Kamik. Here are 10 facts about her. 10. Young Polish Missionary. Helena Agnieszka Kamik was born on February 9, 1991, in Krakow, Poland. From a young age, she demonstrated a deep sense of dedication to faith and service to others, which led her down the path of volunteering and missions. Raised in a devout Catholic family, Helena was always involved in religious and community activities, developing a burning desire to help those in need from an early age. Throughout her life, Helena showed a strong commitment to the mission of serving others, especially through her involvement with the Salvatorian Missionary Volunteer Service. Through this program, she participated in various missions in countries such as Hungary, Romania, Zambia, and finally Bolivia. Her ability to touch the lives of people, especially children, reflected her generous and compassionate spirit. Her role as a missionary was not only charitable but also deeply spiritual. For Helena, her mission was to share God's love with those she encountered, and her Catholic faith was the central pillar of her life. She believed that the greatest gift she had received was the knowledge of God, and this gift, in her words, could not be kept to herself but should be spread to the world. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so to not miss any curiosities about the saints. 9. International Education Helena had an impressive educational journey, marked by international opportunities that shaped her worldview and commitment to missionary service. One of the most significant milestones in her education was the scholarship she received to study at Lewis Tun School in the UK. During her time at this prestigious school, Helena not only enhanced her academic knowledge but also developed her interpersonal skills and her ability to adapt to new cultures, essential elements for her future missionary work. After completing her studies in the UK, Helena returned to Poland, where she continued her academic training at the Silesian University of Technology. There, she graduated in chemical engineering, a demanding field that required dedication and rigor. Her course was conducted in English, highlighting her command of the language and her ability to operate in a globalized environment. This technical knowledge, combined with her fluency in English, was a valuable asset during her international missions, where Helena was able to interact with diverse communities and cultures. 8. Intense Faith Life Helena lived an intense life of faith, where devotion to her religion occupied a central place in her routine. During her university years, Helena maintained the practice of attending daily Mass. This choice was not merely a habit but an expression of her deep connection with God and her conviction of the importance of nurturing her spiritual life amid academic challenges. Daily Mass was, for Helena, a moment of personal encounter with Christ, where she renewed her strength and determination to follow her vocation of serving others. Her constant participation in the Eucharist demonstrated her commitment to keeping the flame of her Catholic faith alive, something that was indispensable on her journey. Moreover, this time of prayer and reflection provided her with the serenity and clarity of spirit needed to face daily responsibilities, both in her studies and her missionary activities. 7. Missions Abroad Helena was a dedicated young missionary who devoted herself to various international missions throughout her life. Her altruistic spirit and willingness to serve others led her to travel to different countries, where she could apply her talents and skills for the benefit of the communities she encountered. Among Helena's most significant missions were her travels to Hungary, Zambia, and Romania. In Hungary, she became involved in projects aimed at providing educational and spiritual support to children and young people, organizing day camps that promoted not only learning but also strengthening faith. In Zambia, Helena worked with vulnerable children, offering English and math classes at care centers, while also conveying Christian values through the gospel. Her dedication and empathy touched the lives of those she interacted with, and many considered her an older sister. In each of these places, Helena not only contributed her skills but also learned from the local cultures and the realities faced by the communities. This enriching exchange reinforced her understanding of the importance of volunteering and solidarity, qualities she carried with her on each new mission. The climax of her missionary journey occurred during her trip to Bolivia, where she arrived with the intention of helping to prepare a preschool run by nuns. 6. The Tragic Murder The murder of Helena on January 24, 2017, in Bolivia, 
was a tragic event that shocked not only the Catholic community but also all those who knew her story and her work. Helena, then just 26 years old, was on a volunteer mission, dedicated to helping at a preschool run by nuns. Her life was brutally cut short when a criminal broke into the place where she worked and attacked her. This act of violence not only took the life of a young woman full of promise but also exposed the challenges and dangers that many missionaries face while dedicating themselves to serve vulnerable communities in various parts of the world. The context in which Helena was involved, characterized by a continuous struggle against poverty and crime, highlighted the fragility of life and the commitment that people like her assume to bring hope and help to those in greatest need. After the crime, Bolivian authorities conducted an investigation that led to the identification and arrest of the murderer. The assailant, Romualdo Mamio dos Santos, was sentenced to 30 years in prison, a decision that, while it does not bring Helena back, provided some form of justice for her family and the community that loved her. The conviction of the murderer was met with a mix of relief and sadness, as the pain of Helena's loss was still very present. However, Helena's death was not in vain. After her murder, her life and legacy became a source of inspiration for many. The Catholic community in Poland and elsewhere began to see Helena as an example of virtue and faith, leading to a growing recognition of her dedication to missionary service. 5. Beginning of the Beatification Process The beatification process for Helena was officially initiated in May 2024, a significant milestone for the Catholic Church and for those who admired her life and service. The opening of the cause was proclaimed by the Archbishop of Krakow, Marek Jedrzejewski, in a gesture that recognizes Helena's dedication and commitment to her faith and to others. This step is a testament to the impact her life had on many, especially in Poland, her homeland, where Helena is seen as an exemplary figure of love and charity. For Helena to be declared blessed, it will be necessary to gather evidence that demonstrates her life of heroic virtue and possibly the occurrence of miracles attributed to her intercession. The Archbishop made this decision after consulting with the Polish Bishops' Conference and obtaining the consent of the Dicastery for the Causes of Saints of the Holy See, reflecting the seriousness and importance of this step. The Archbishop's appeal for people to send documents, letters, or information about Helena, both positive and negative, demonstrates the transparency and care of the process. This allows all those who knew her or who have information about her life and work to contribute to the cause, reinforcing the idea that beatification is not only a recognition of the Church but also a testimony from the community about Helena's life. Since her death, many have turned to Helena in prayer, recognizing her dedication and missionary spirit. Her life, marked by a deep commitment to faith and service to others, inspires many, especially young people, to follow a similar path. As the process advances, the Catholic community eagerly awaits the steps that will lead to a possible official recognition of Helena as blessed, a status that would not only honor her memory but also reinforce the legacy of her missionary work and her unwavering love for humanity. For example of life for young people. Helena's legacy as a missionary, volunteer, and fervent Catholic is an inspiring example for young people in Poland and around the world. Her life is a testament to the power of service and commitment to faith, reflecting the importance of living according to spiritual and human values in a world that often faces challenges and uncertainties. Moreover, Helena is seen as a model of spiritual life. Her daily participation in Mass and her deep Catholic faith were central to her journey, showing that spirituality can be a motivating force in a person's life. Helena's impact extends beyond her lifetime. After her death, she became a symbol of courage and compassion, inspiring many to follow her example of love and service. The Archbishop of Krakow and other church leaders emphasized the importance of her legacy, encouraging young people to engage in missionary and volunteer activities, thereby reflecting Helena's life. In a world that frequently faces divisions and challenges, Helena's story is a light of hope and inspiration, proving that love and dedication to others are powerful legacies that can shape not only individuals but entire societies. 3. Similarity to Carlo Acutis Helena is often compared to blessed Carlo Acutis, a young Catholic who also dedicated his life to faith and service. This comparison is not just about similarities in the ages they lived but also reflects their deep spiritual convictions and commitment to evangelization. Both shared a special love for the Eucharist, recognizing it as the center of their spiritual lives. 
For Helena, daily participation in Mass was an essential practice that nourished her faith and connected her to God and the community. Similarly, Carlo Acutis was known for his devotion to the Eucharist, often describing it as his highway to heaven. This dedication to the celebration of the Eucharist exemplifies how both viewed the importance of communion with Christ as a fundamental element of their spiritual journey. Additionally, Helena and Carlo used social media as tools for evangelization, recognizing the power of these platforms to reach and impact others. Carlo became famous for his ability to use technology to spread the message of the gospel, creating websites and projects that promoted catechesis and understanding of the Catholic faith. Helena, in turn, also used these tools to inspire young people and share her missionary experience, encouraging others to engage in service activities and live an active life of faith. The similarity between the two young people goes beyond their religious practices, both represent a contemporary model of how faith can be lived and shared in the modern world. The life of Helena, like that of Carlo, shows that youth can be a time of spiritual fervor and significant impact on society, regardless of circumstances. 2. Religion in the family. Religion played a central role in Helena's life, and this devotion had deep roots in her family. From an early age, Helena was surrounded by an environment that valued the Catholic faith, reflecting the tradition and spirituality that permeated her home. Her family was known for its deep devotion, with religious practices being an integral part of their daily life. One of the most notable members of her family was Bishop Jan Zajac, her great-uncle, a respected figure in the Catholic Church in Poland. His position and influence within the church helped shape the religious environment in which Helena grew up. The Kamik family home was adorned with religious icons, a sign of the spirituality that permeated their household. These icons, which often depict important figures of the Catholic faith, were not just decorative elements but also symbols of the family's spiritual heritage. The practice of faith in Helena's family went beyond superficial traditions, it was an essential part of their lives. Family prayers, participation in celebrations, and involvement in church activities were common, reinforcing Christian values and creating a sense of community and belonging. This strong religious foundation not only shaped Helena's life but also influenced her vocation as a missionary and volunteer. 1. Posthumous Recognition After Helena's tragic death, her legacy of compassion and service to others was significantly recognized by the Polish government. In honor of her social work and unwavering dedication to those in need, Helena was posthumously awarded the Gold Cross of Merit. This honor is one of the highest distinctions awarded in Poland, intended to recognize acts of courage and exceptional service for the benefit of society. Her life was marked by efforts on behalf of the most needy, from her youth to her missions abroad, where she dedicated herself to helping impoverished communities. The posthumous recognition of her social contribution highlights the importance of service to others and solidarity, values that Helena embodied in her life. This honor not only celebrates Helena's life but also serves as an inspiration for others, encouraging them to follow her example of altruism and dedication to the well-being of others. The Gold Cross of Merit symbolizes Polish society's gratitude for those who, like Helena, make a difference in a world that often lacks compassion and empathy. Helena's life and death have become a testament to the transformative power of love and faith, resonating deeply in society and in the hearts of those who seek to do good. And we have reached the end of another story full of curiosities. Don't forget to leave in the comments the curiosities about which saint you would like to see here on the channel. Until the next story.